it's here the final gear of the year video for this gear of the year week here at homesteady we have been sharing the tools that we rely on every day here in our homestead uh, to do what we do with our animals preparing food for our family we have covered lots of topics today's topic is a little bit special and I'm really excited about it. I hope you like this topic. We have been asked a ton about this. I was thinking about covering goats. I was thinking about covering dogs. Don't worry, we're gonna do this again next year because everybody loved Gear of the Year. We will do this again. For the last video in this series, I wanna cover the tools that I use to pay the bills now, which is so exciting. Homestead vlogging. I know it's a little bit too much for sure. So cold, but we're always coming back for more. The tools I use, like that camera, actually not that camera, I'll explain that in a second. The tools I use every day to make these videos for YouTube, the videos I put on my website that help me to pay the bills, feed my family, live this amazing lifestyle that I am so fortunate to be able to do. I get asked a awful lot, Aust, what do you use to make your videos? What equipment? How do you do it? How do you make a living doing this? So let's dive into the tools that I use, the gear of the year for homestead vlogging. So just before we dive in today, the two parameters that we have been using this week are A, this is equipment we've spent money on and that we've used for a long time, and B, it's equipment that makes our life easier, that works really well, that we are excited to share with you. And in today's topic, being a homestead vlogger, making videos about homesteading and sharing them on YouTube, I'm going to cover just the video aspect. I'm not gonna talk about the editing side of things or YouTube or any of that. In this video, I'm just gonna talk about all the imagery, the videos that you see, what are the five, and actually I'm gonna have a bonus one, six tools that I use every day when making the videos that you watch here on our channel. Number one is actually not this camera. If this camera looks a little different, if it sounds a little different, it's because this is not my usual setup. This is. And I have fortunately a backup camera here that I can film this on. We're gonna to switch to this in a second so you'll see the difference. The camera that I film all my footage on, all the videos, everything you see, 95% of the footage comes from this camera, which is the Canon 80D. The Canon 80D is a camera that is perfect for vloggers for a couple different reasons. First, it shoots in full 1080p, so if you're making videos for YouTube, you have full resolution, beautiful pictures. It does not do 4K, which is a bit of a bummer, but YouTube doesn't even allow our videos to be shown in 4K yet. That will be coming soon someday, but right now they don't have that. Why I use the Canon? First off, Canon just has a beautiful picture, as you can see from this picture. Uh, one of the features that makes the Canon the vlogger's choice is this guy right here, the flip screen. It is so hard to film yourself if you don't know what you're filming, right? You're looking like this, you don't know what the picture looks like. Uh, it's really hard to tell whether or not you're in frame, believe it or not. I've tried it before, I've used cameras that didn't have the flip screen very hard. The Canon 
has the flip screen. This is gonna be super meta. We got a camera filming a camera here. I can see when I'm talking to this camera, everything that's in screen. That does create a little bit of a challenge, which is sometimes you'll notice I'm looking over here a lot. That's because that's where my screen is. Pro tip to a beginner, learn to look at the lens, not at the screen, because vlogs are super weird and people be like, hi everybody, today on the homestead, we're a little crazy. Learn to look right there. I had to learn to do that. People used to yell at me in the early videos. I still, from time to time, look over here. It's, it's a bad habit. Canon 80D, got that flip screen. It also has something which the camera I'm using right now, which is the Canon 60D, does not have. Really good live autofocus. So ready? I'm gonna walk backwards here, and I'm not gonna be really in focus anymore. This camera autofocuses live. The one I'm using right now does not. So the Canon 80D will change focus automatically. Again, when you're vlogging and you can't focus yourself, you're just filming yourself, you need a camera with a really good autofocusing system. 80D, good quality picture, awesome autofocusing, and the flip out screen makes it the go-to camera for vloggers and the camera we're going to be going to right now as I snap my fingers and switch the 80D to, and the 60D. Ready? There we go. Now I'm holding the 60D, the camera that you were just watching through, and I'm filming with the 80D. You might say to yourself, the picture quality looks no different, Aust. What's the difference? The picture's pretty much the same. There's very little difference in picture quality. What is different is the autofocus. And that I can show you if I back up now. I will still be in focus. The camera will automatically adjust. And here, I will still be in focus too. Item number two, so important. I use it all the time. Every vlog you ever watch of mine is not that expensive, awesome upgrade to any camera. The Rode Shotgun Mic. This is like their base model. And the reason I got the base model is because it has no battery needed. There's no battery to die on me or something I forget to turn off and or turn on. The next models up of this Rode microphone, while their audio might be a bit better, you can forget to turn them on. You can let the battery die. And then what you get is an hour of Yeah, we don't want that. So let's change right now the audio quality you hear coming from the camera. It's okay. If I'm talking like this to somebody else, it's not great. Let's see what the Rode shotgun mic can do. So we're just gonna go like, uh, boof, there you go. A Little bit different audio quality here, but you're gonna notice a big difference when I'm talking right here. I'm talking like I would with an interview with somebody voice like I was talking to a person doing an interview uh, it's a better quality audio the other nice thing about the shotgun is it will not pick up the noise as I walk behind the camera I'm not gonna be quite as loud so if you have background noise it's not quite as loud because the shotgun shoots forward and just picks up like a cone in front of it you'll notice from when I had it on the camera before run the clip N not that expensive awesome upgrade to any camera yeah, that. Uh, the shotgun mic mounts to the top of the camera. Again, this model has no battery necessary. One less thing to forget or mess up. And really good quality audio upgrade from what the camera itself actually has, which the ADD camera has an okay. Speaking of audio quality, gotta wait for the Jake break over here. The ADD's audio quality is not that bad, but you're gonna do much better with the Rode shotgun mic, and this model's like 100 bucks. So you're gonna upgrade your Canon much nicer. Okay, the next big change you're gonna see, and this one is a huge change visually. DSLR cameras, one of the nicest things about them is you can get really good cinematic quality footage. This doesn't look very cinematic right now. Everything's kind of in focus. It's beautiful, but it doesn't look like what you see on the movies. That's because the lens I'm using right now is not what they call a fast lens. You don't get that blurry background like you're used to seeing in the movies. They call that bokeh. Maybe I'm pronouncing that wrong. Anyway, point is, the lens that I go to for my beautiful footage, when you see those slow motion shots of the cows, moo, and you see chickens flapping in slow motion, those shots 
those beautiful crisp shots are with a different lens. And that's item number three on my gear of the year for homestead vlogging or any kind of vlogging really. The Tamron 24-70 lens. Let's take a look at what that looks like right now. Ready? We're just gonna do one of the old snappy, snappy jobbies. Boom! Look at how pretty this shot looks. This looks like the movies. My backdrop is blurred, but I'm crisp and in focus. And now if you wanna see how good the autofocus is on the ADD, just to go back to the camera that we're using here. Give it a second, I'm gonna still be in focus here. I'm gonna be in focus here. I'm gonna get real close and it's gonna be in focus. It's auto-focusing live. Nobody's running that focus. It looks really good. And you can see like even my hand is out of focus. That's how fast this lens is. So it's in focus and then boom, blurry backdrop. That's where you get that cinematic look. And I get that, this Tamron 2470 lens. It's not a Canon lens. I purchased this lens. Canon has a comparable one. They're both just about as fast, but this one has video stabilization, which comes into play, not when I'm on a tripod talking like this, but wow, when I'm vlogging and I'm walking and talking and I'm, I'm pointing at Ladybug, I'm saying, look at that cow, that's an amazing cow. Right now I have stabilization on. Let's see what this exact shot looks like with it turned off, ready? Here's stabilization on, talking, walking, here, stabilization off, talking, walking, on, I'm talking, I'm walking, I'm trying to be really fair here and, and keep this as still as possible, off again, I'm walking, I'm talking. Do you notice a difference? That image stabilization, which is now back on, is very important when you're vlogging. And so for me, back on the tripod here, Getting the Tamron lens, similar price range, similar speed, similar, similar image, that is a hard word to say. Um, that video stabilization feature was a big game changer. And so that's why I went with the Tamron lens. And like all the gear today, we'll have links below. If you're looking for any of the gear, links below to that gear. So what does that lens look like? Just so you know, I'm gonna change back. The lens I was using before is actually a wide angle lens. Also a very important lens to have, but if you're gonna get just one and you want it to look beautiful, the other thing I forgot to mention, this is a zoom lens. So real quick, we can zoom in on Ladybug back there and uh, focus on her. Now I'm like way too big here, right? And I'll zoom out and I'm in focus and Ladybug is way small back there. This is one of the fastest zoom lenses so you can have some zoom and still this beautiful cinematic look most zoom lenses aren't as fast which means your background will not be as blurry and it will look like the wide angle lens which i was using earlier so if you're going to get just one lens i think this tamron 2470 is the best pick because you can have a zoom when you're doing vlogging sometimes things happen quickly and you got to zoom in real quick to get a shot of it while you have the zoom, you still have a beautiful quality fast lens. If you zoom it in, I mean, th that's a beautiful, that looks like a 50 millimeter, really beautiful shot, uh, nice talking head shot. And then quickly I can zoom out, wait, Ladybug's doing something crazy. And now we can get like the whole, the whole backdrop. This lens is so, diverse so love tamron love this lens great purchase if you can't go that route uh the other one you see me use a lot is the efs 10 to 80 18 millimeter wide angle canon lens this i use for really wide shots if we're in the barn and i need to capture more this wide angle lens is the one i go to but this is a secondary most of the footage you see on this channel is shot through the tamron uh, I'm gonna switch lenses now so you can see the difference again with the wide angle and also so I can show you what the Tamron looks like. So ready, bibbity bobbity boop. And now you see the wide angle. I mean, with the wide angle lens, this is also a zoom lens. We can get a lot wider. Uh, this is what the Tamron lens looks like, zoom lens. Lots of zoom power. In a, it's a very heavy lens, it's solid, awesome lens. 
uh, my favorite. This one's not bad though, and this one's a lot cheaper. So if you don't have the money for the Tamron out the gate, and you want a little bit of zoom, and also a nice wide angle shot, the Canon EFS 10-18 millimeter is not a bad option either. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to my favorite lens on the camera, ready? One more time, here we go. Boom, okay, did I switch hands, was it? Boom, I don't know, I don't remember. <laughs> okay, this is my backup stuff, I'm putting that down. Let's go to item number four, which is the beater camera. Item number four is a GoPro, and pretty much since the first vlog, we've been using GoPros to take shots that we were too scared to put our nice camera in. If you wanna get someone pouring feed into a chicken feeder, well, the GoPro is just about small enough to fit into almost any space for any unique shot. It's that big, and uh, it takes great quality images. This would not be my primary vlogging camera. I wouldn't start a vlog with a GoPro. The audio quality is just not there at all, and the picture quality is not as nice as what you get on a Canon DSLR. But for a second camera that you will let your cow step on, submerse into the lake when you're catching fish, get mud shots where you clip it to a tree branch and then it just sprays mud from the ATV. So many cool shots and they're usually pretty quick shots so you hardly even notice the difference in the camera. GoPros have what's called a linear shot mode, which gets rid of that weird warped wide angle GoPro look, which the earlier ones, they all looked kind of funny. The newer GoPros can tighten it up and almost match what you see here. So in a quick shot from my Canon to the GoPro, you hardly even notice that I have changed cameras. It's fast, there's action, you're getting sprayed with mud or covered up in feed, and then it's over fast. There's gonna be a few bonus items here. Uh, if you get yourself a GoPro, get yourself one of these clips and one of these flexi arms because you're gonna get some shots where you're like, oh man, we're getting an angry bull in that stall and I don't wanna be in that stall. Well, you clip your GoPro to the fence, then the bull comes up and but boom, it's still there. I've got so many great shots. Awesome addition to the vlog. Not your first camera, over time, add in a GoPro. Link below to the latest GoPro. The latest one has got rave reviews. Uh, this one is not bad either, which I'll actually put what I have and the latest model down below. Because if you see my footage, I want you to know what this exact one looks like. Okay, that's item number four. Item number five, we're going boom, up. Let's fly. Item number five is the Mavic Air. This little drone 
is the drone we use to get all our beautiful aerial shots of this farm, of outdoor adventures when we go out in the kayak. My buddy actually flew this on a fishing trip last year. He launched it and landed it in the kayak. There are nicer drones with better quality video, but what you get out of the Mavic Air, you get 4K video, so still amazing quality video. Good size sensor for nice looking picture, but you get all that in a package that folds up and fits in a space practically the same as your cell phone. So like, look at the Mavic Air all folded up. It is that big, sorry, and I don't think I have my cell phone on me, so like, I have a checkbook on me. Boom, checkbook is bigger than the Mavic Air. This thing fits in a pocket. Not a front pocket, sorry. It also comes with a remote, which is about the same size, so you'll need to carry the two. The remote attaches to your phone. But that little guy, if you're in a kayak, I, I've done it, my buddy did it last year for our fishing video. Boom, you unfold it, you can launch it from the palm of your hand, like this, it goes up in the air, and you get amazing quality shots like this one. gonna wear out my snapping finger for this video. I'm really excited about this video. I know this isn't gonna be stuff that everyone needs, but being able to make a living making videos on YouTube, for one, is just, it's awesome. I'm so glad I get to do this. It's a work that I love doing, and it's something you could do too. The age of like YouTube and vlogging is not over. It's kind of just started, and uh, you shouldn't, if, you, if you're into this kind of thing, you shouldn't hold back. You should try it. Even if it doesn't become your number one job, your main line of work, it can support other things and help you grow in other directions. A lot of people can break away from the nine to five using media and things like YouTube. So uh, this stuff excites me because it's what has allowed me to produce this show that you enjoy and then in turn that supports us and allows me to be able to live this lifestyle and share it with you. I get really excited when talking about my gear. This, uh, it's awesome. Anyway, uh, that was item number five, four, let's see, one, five. That was five. I'm gonna give you a bonus item, number six. Bonus item number six is called a Joby. It is, the Joby's cool because it kind of doubles as a selfie stick so you can hold it like this and get some really good shots like that. Uh, you know, if you're walking around, vlogging. Look at it out here, we're doing the Casey Neistat thing. This is awesome. Yo, man, I'm on my skateboard. I just said, yo, man. <laughs> That's like cool guy from 1990 when I was thinking guys were cool that were older. Anyway, uh, the Joby is good for a selfie stick, but then let's say you gotta get a shot of that beautiful cow in the background. You can just come over here, set it up for a time lapse. Can you even see that? And now using that Joby, uh, you got yourself a tripod. You can attach it to a fence post, hang it from a tree. I've done all those things. It's a great tool. It's something I use a lot here on the homestead. Uh, when I'm kind of running and gunning and I don't want to set up this big clunky tripod, uh, you know, when I'm jumping in the car and going on in a kayak adventure or going hunting or something, Oftentimes, that's the tripod that I'll take with me. So there they are, six items. I will have them all linked below. I get asked this a lot. People ask, what equipment are you using? What cameras are you using? And when trying to figure out what was the last video we were gonna do this week, I thought I could answer a ton of people's questions by making this video, sending the link. We'll have links below. They're Amazon affiliate links. If you shop through those links, we'll get a bonus for sending you there, but it won't cost you a penny extra. And if you do any shopping on Amazon, just type in www.amazon.com steady.com first and it will forward you to Amazon for any other things you're going to buy but if you're gonna buy these things use the link below because we get a referral and that really helps us do this show and just like this gear this gear really helps us do this show I use this stuff every day it gets sprayed by hoses accidentally it gets dropped knocked over by dogs gets kicked around by goats The equipment has held up. The companies have honored their warranties. I mean, this is gear I 
I make my living with this gear. And the coolest part about it is my entire media business, this one, Home Study, but even the one I did before I was full-time Home Study where I was producing videos and uh, audio podcasts and stuff like that for other companies, all this equipment, while it is expensive, if you bought all this equipment here and had a computer and all that stuff, maybe you would, you know, to get started as a media company, you'd probably spend $10,000. But you can make a, a six-figure living from that $10,000. Growing up, I watched my parents build a, a construction business, and it was a great business. They fed us every day from it. One piece of equipment for my dad, a new piece of equipment, $75,000, $100,000, $60,000 used. I mean, all his equipment was just so much money. And while it would make good money, the ratio of 10,000 to six figure income versus like 100,000 to six figure income, I prefer these tools. If you're creative, if it's something you like doing, you can make a living with a really nice Canon. You can make a living with an okay Canon. The ADD is not their flagship. It's it's the vlogger special. Uh, and a nice lens, a little bit of know-how, and some good editing and you know knowing how to make people, how to entertain people with it. I hope this video entertained you. I hope you enjoyed this series. It really seems like you had, so don't worry. We didn't cover goats. Uh, we're getting more into goats this year and I just didn't feel like I had enough to share with you on goats. Dogs, I'm gonna be covering dog training. You'll see all the gear in the upcoming weeks as I'm showing more dog training videos. Uh, so I didn't cover those topics, but next year we will do gear of the year again because everyone seemed to really enjoy it. Thank you so much for using the links and supporting our show in whatever ways you have been. And we will see you next week as we use all this equipment to make some more fun videos here on Homesteady and you watch it through the YouTube or Facebook or whatever you watch it from. I'm really amped. I love talking audio video. I love geeking out on my gear. But I have to, I gotta shut this one down. Otherwise it'll be like a half hour video and no one's gonna watch, so. <laughs> we'll see you in next week's videos. Hat transition. I just wanna point out. That cow was completely unfazed that entire vlog. She sat behind me the whole time. These cows are now officially YouTube cows. If you like this idea, gear of the year, be sure to leave a comment below, letting us know what topics you would like to see covered this week. And don't forget, if you do any of your shopping through www.amsteady.com, it'll bring you straight to Amazon, helping to support this show while not costing you a penny extra. You can click on this link right here to do that.